IT and IPS Enterprise Unions. Um, we have decided to have a, have a COVID awareness campaign as well as the vaccination, importance of the vaccination. And uh, uh, accordingly, we have come, uh, Dr. P. V. Venkateswaran, a renowned scientist in Prussia who is working in um, Vigyan Prashad, as well as uh, Comrade uh, Dr. Hamlata, the President, all India President of CI2 is with us. Uh, I will hand over the proceedings to Comrade Belkin, who will coordinate uh, the meeting. Comrade Belkin. Comrade, uh, good morning for uh, everyone. And uh, I welcome all the unions uh, who uh, take part in the members of the union here. So uh, everybody uh, know that we are going through a tough time in uh, all the states across India. So uh, many of our uh, uh, people, members of our affected and the general public have lost their livelihoods and uh, uh, even uh, life. So uh, we as a national coordination committee, we plan to take this uh, campaign on 10th to a uh, greater extent, demanding government to uh, increase the vaccination speed and also uh, creating awareness among people uh, based on scientific understanding on how to uh, and why to uh, take vaccination in as early as possible. So on this background, this meeting is being organized and uh, uh, Dr. TVB is a renowned uh, uh, senior scientist who uh, talks and uh, campaigns for the scientific temper among uh, people of India. And uh, uh, we invited him and he readily accepted uh, to talk on this subject for the union members and uh, uh, I thank him for that and I invite him uh, now to give the uh, session. Uh, uh, before that, uh, Comrade Gopi, do, do you want to add uh, any? Comrade Gopi? No, no, nothing, nothing. Carry on. Carry on with the process. Okay, Comrade. Uh, I invite Comrade uh, TVV to uh, start the session. Thank you, Comrade. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. And uh, let me start by uh, making a presentation. Okay, so then uh, I suppose I'll make a presentation initially. And then uh, uh, you, you should uh, give me a co-host uh, rights. If uh, whoever is coordinating, can you do that, please? Yes, come on, just a minute. Okay, so let me. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's uh, start with the uh, basics. This is the uh, electron uh, microscope uh, image of uh, the uh, novel coronavirus. Uh, don't ask me why the virus is colored uh, saffron. Okay. So what you are seeing here is a uh, few number of uh, uh, virus particle with its uh, characteristic uh, spike protein. I'm sure some of these words we have heard, so I'm not going to uh, get into those things in detail. Okay, these are all the spike protein. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, important characteristic of uh, the family of coronavirus. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a huge number of uh, coronaviruses within the family of coronavirus. There are more than a few hundreds that we know of. Uh, among human, uh, this novel coronavirus is a seventh which has been uh, identified, okay, uh, uh, causing disease. Uh, there may be other coronavirus which may not be causing disease. So then there is a very little chance that we will actually find it. Uh, uh, there are seven which uh, cause disease and we have uh, detected it. Uh, one of them was uh, detected in 1962. I mean, as uh, late as uh, 1962, quite obviously because virology itself is... Uh, very young uh, subject. Okay, uh, what I mean when I say it was detected in 1962, it means that it started infecting humans in 1962. Okay, so before that, that particular virus was not infecting human, or at least not known to have been infecting virus. I mean humans in a large way. Uh, so one of the important thing to note is that uh, even among the coronavirus, there has been past cases of naturally evolving and uh, infecting humans that, that we know of. This is the seventh and the latest. So novel means uh, new. 
So from that angle, I mean, uh, this is uh, popularly called as uh, novel coronavirus, otherwise uh, SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV-2, you know, I mean, that's how uh, it's called, you know it. Yeah. So this is the uh, uh, schematic image of uh, the virus. Again, uh, many of these things, uh, we all know about it, but just quick, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, quick uh, uh, introduction. I mean, uh, this virus is basically four proteins. There is a spike protein, there is a, a nucleocapsid protein, there is a membrane protein, there is an envelope protein. So it's just four proteins and a bit of RNA. So basically it's a four proteins packed uh, uh, with a bit of lipid uh, and a piece of RNA. That's what the uh, virus is. You know, it's a very simple organism. Uh, this is all we know that how we inhale these droplets and then it causes disease and if you keep six feet distance, I mean, uh, the chance of inhaling it is uh, reduced substantially. So it provides a certain protection. We all again know that uh, if you are infected for the first about five days, you don't get uh, much of a symptom. Maybe from the third or fourth day, you have a slight uh, symptom, but uh, the symptoms actually become uh, uh, very significant after the fifth day. But whereas you are, uh, you are starting to uh, spread virus even from the second day. Okay. And if you are getting cured, then most likely you will get cured within about 14 days. That is your body will be able to uh, expel the uh, virus uh, from your body. That's something that we know. So what does a virus do? Okay. There are uh, special cells called as epithelial cells. That's a technical name. Basically, it means that uh, lining. Okay, uh, so all cells which are lining some organs are called as epithelial, right? Uh, skin, for example, we say that epithelial layer. So meaning that it's a topmost layer which is in contact with the air surrounding us, right? So similarly, when you are looking at uh, the uh, respiratory system, for example, the inside of the nose is in contact with air, right? So the cells in that uh, part of uh, nose which is in contact with air, uh, on the surface, right? That's called as epithelial cell. So similarly, from nose, there is a kind of a pipe which uh, takes uh, the respiratory tract which goes up to uh, lungs, right? So the tracts will also be inner lining. Similarly, when you uh, go into uh, the lungs, the lungs also will have inner lining, right? Lungs have uh, a tree-like uh, structure and uh, at the end of every branch, wherever it, uh, it terminates, there is a small air pack, uh, I mean air sac, I mean, I think these are something that we would have studied. So that our sacs will also have epithelial cells, right? So the virus actually infects largely the epithelial cells. When it uh, crosses the epithelial cells and gets into a bloodstream, that's when uh, uh, things happen. So I'll talk about it later. But let's look at uh, uh, what the virus does. Okay. So the virus uh, uh, attaches itself to uh, one of the uh, epithelial cells. The attachment takes place because of the uh, specific structure of the uh, spike protein. The spike protein has a structure like a key and uh, the uh, ACE2 receptor on the epithelial cell uh, is having a structure like a lock. So they are able to uh, attach to each other. Okay. Technically, we will call it as the receptor uh, uh, binding potential and uh, the uh, uh, binding potential of the spike protein are uh, the affinity is very great so they both are able to stick together right so that's what essentially uh, happens because of the specific structure of the uh, uh, spike protein of coronavirus so basically it gets attached to the cell okay this attachment happens randomly remember that you have uh, inhaled some virus so the virus is going through your tract there is an air flow so like a, a water flowing in a river, there are turbulence. So the virus will be going from this end to that end. Accidentally, the virus may hit the uh, epithelial cell. And when it hits the epithelial cell, it will get attached. Okay, so there is a randomness over there. Okay, so from studies, we know that uh, you will get infected only when you inhale close to 280 virus particles. I mean, if you inhale about 10 particles or 12 particles, the chance of you getting uh, infection is very low. Of course, all these things are uh, uh, percentage-wise. Basically, that 50% uh, 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 of people will get infected 
if they inhale about 280 particles. So that's a kind of a threshold level that uh, people have calculated, right? So once it attaches to the uh, uh, spike protein, attaches to the uh, AS2 receptor, the uh, second stage starts. Uh, the virus enters the uh, cell, okay, to the host cell. This takes about 10 minutes, okay. I mean, uh, it's not a very simple process. It's a very complicated process. So that complicated process takes about 10 minutes. But in, once it enters the uh, cell, uh, the uh, RNA is released from the cell. Basically, what is called as uncoating takes place. Basically, the virus uh, opens up uh, and the RNA, which is inside, comes out. And then uh, in our cell, there are uh, cell organelles called ribosome. These are all something that we would have studied in our school, right? So the ribosomes are uh, protein making factories, blah, 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 we would have studied, right? So the RNA is picked up by the ribosome and the ribosome thinks that it is a messenger RNA coming from our nucleus. The ribosome does not know, okay? When the RNA meets the uh, ribosome, the ribosome starts reading the RNA and then starts making the protein written in the RNA. And the proteins which are written in the RNA are the viral proteins, okay? So multiple copies of the viral proteins are made. Similarly, there is an instruction to copy the RNA itself. So the, uh, our cell starts producing the copies of the RNA also. So now you have all the parts. Like, I mean, uh, in a car factory, you will have different parts, right? You know, engine somewhere, door somewhere, wheel somewhere, uh, axle somewhere, and so on, right? So like that, there is an assembly mechanism uh, in our body where the uh, uh, virus is assembled. Once the virus is assembled, called gay complex, okay, the virus comes out. This process from uh, 2 to 6 takes about 10 hours. Okay, this is 10 hours. In this 10 hours, one virus entering one cell will produce close to about 1000 copies. Okay, so 1000 copies will come out of this uh, virus at one go. This is an electron microscope uh, image. All this uh, saffron orange color are uh, virus coming out of a cell. After uh, making uh, uh, these these uh, virus copies were made inside that cell, okay, so it's coming out of that cell. Okay, so that's what you are seeing. All this uh, structure that you see on the top, basically these are all uh, uh, the uh, various receptors on the cell surface. Okay, so there are more than one uh, receptor on the cell surface for uh, different uh, work. So the cell, I mean, the virus is coming out that you can see. And again, as I say, uh, we know that uh, the virus goes into our lungs, uh, respiratory tracts. I mean, there are uh, air sac, okay? In the air sac, uh, uh, what happens is that in the wall, in the wall of the uh, air sac, the uh, virus uh, infects and that's what becomes inflamed. So the inflammation starts, okay? So when more and more cells are uh, uh, infected, inflammation starts. I said 1,000 virus come out of one cell, okay? Of the 1,000, again randomly, about 500 will be able to uh, latch on to another cell, okay? And about 500 will not be able to latch on to another cell. So this remaining 500 will mix with the air. Remember that these are all cells on the surface, right? So there is a, uh, the air and the cell are in contact, okay? So the viruses that comes on the side, which is uh, toward the air, most likely will be uh, spreading toward into the air, okay? So uh, in your breath, whenever you are taking a, a breath, the virus will be mixed and it will be coming out. Remaining 500 will be moving toward the, migrating to the next uh, cells and then uh, in those cells, it will cause infection. Once a particular cell makes about 1,000 copies, the cell will die. Okay, by then uh, the cell will know that something uh, amiss is taking place, that uh, it is not producing the protein that it is supposed to produce, but uh, still it is overworking. I mean, its uh, amino acids reserves are becoming zero, its energy is uh, being taken away. So the cell will understand that something uh, uncontrolled, or something wrong is taking place. So there is a programmed cell death. So that the programmed cell death will take place. So the cell will die. Once this information comes, it will die. At that time, the cell will also uh, send a chemical signal called cytokine, okay? That chemical signal will uh, reach the nearby cell and say that maybe there is a viral attack 
so those cells will become alert and then uh, uh, try to keep its uh, antiviral properties uh, ready okay but the coronavirus has uh, a very interesting uh, property one of the first protein that is produced when the coronavirus uh, uh, genome is read is a protein which uh, silences the uh, cytokine production okay so basically uh, it's like uh, a thief coming into your uh, home i mean uh, by opening the as2 door and then first closing your mouth so that you don't shout okay so that's a kind of thing that happens uh, uh, inside our uh, cell so that's why coronavirus is uh, uh, able to uh, spread so uh, now when you look at the uh, 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 respiratory tract the uh, these red things are all the uh, as2 receptors on a cell okay so this is a cell okay and this is a virus this is a spike protein when the spike protein and the as2 receptor are able to lock the virus can enter this cell okay make copies and then this cell will die and then the copies will move to the next cells maybe even farther away okay so it will start spreading within the uh, uh, respiratory tract once it reaches the air sac okay in the uh, lungs huh? the air sac is very thin you know it's like uh, uh, the size of the uh, wall of a air sac is like a tissue paper much less than a tissue paper but it is criss cross with the capillary blood stream basically it is in the air sac the oxygen from the uh, uh, air is absorbed by the blood and the carbon dioxide in the blood comes into the uh, air sac and that's how the uh, gas exchange takes place okay that's what is we call as respiration okay so uh, for that gas exchange to take place the uh, surface has to be very thin okay so there is only uh, maybe one uh, cell layer or two cell layer of uh, uh, lung cells okay then the blood vessel so the blood vessel will also be like a one cell or two cell thickness okay so it means that it will be so thin right so when uh, the virus attacks one of the uh, lung cell okay and then it kills then it means that the virus is having access to the blood stream okay so through the gaps in the uh, uh, between the uh, cell the virus can enter into the blood stream and the blood stream also has as2 receptor okay the blood vessels also are rich in as2 receptors so once the virus gets access to the blood then the havoc starts because now the blood vessels all over our body has as2 receptor so the virus can travel to any part of our body it can latch there it can grow there i mean it can spread there it can eat up the cells nearby and so on and so forth okay uh, and uh, when uh, it uh, uh, enters into the blood stream it also causes a blood clot basically because it kills a cell and the cell debris uh, create a condition where uh, the blood clot takes place okay so when the blood clot takes place the blood flow is affected and uh, when your uh, lung cells are uh, destroyed and the capillary is destroyed that means that you cannot uh, i mean your, your lung capacity comes down okay so these are the stuff that takes place uh, when the infection uh, occurs okay they when the infection progresses and that's when uh, we are uh, uh, taken to the icu because by then uh, the virus has spread to multiple organs and then uh, there is a possibility of multi organ failure tissues die okay uh, i mean if when the severe disease becomes severe this is what happens but if you look at the uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, nature in about 80% of people who are infected or at least detected infection we know that uh, almost no medicine is needed the people are able to cure by themselves okay uh i mean if you are uh, having a viral disease i mean like a viral uh, fever uh when i was young uh, people used to tell me that uh, for viral disease drugs when they talk about drugs they used to tell that uh, if you take drugs you will be cured in a week if you don't take drug it will take 7 days okay yeah 7 days is actually one week so whether you take drug or not viral fever will go on its own i mean it will get cured on its own you don't need much intervention maybe you will need some intervention to uh ease your pain 
okay you may uh, use a nebulizer to clear your uh, nose for breathing and so on and so forth but you don't really need a medicine per se same thing with uh, the respiratory disease covid 19 about 80% of the people nothing happens you don't need any drug people will get cured automatically but in about 14% when the uh, virus uh, is able to enter into the air sac and then to the uh, blood stream you become critical i mean sorry you become uh, severe okay your case becomes severe there are multiple complications that you are uh, facing and in about 6% you become critical so there is a problem of uh, there is uh, not enough oxygen sometimes maybe the uh, <coughs> the virus has spread to different organs and then it has uh, killed many uh, uh, cells in a tissue and say there is a tissue death and because of that uh, there is a sepsis taking place in your different parts okay there are many things that can happen okay it's not one i mean there are multiple uh, kinds of failures that can happen during a uh, severe and uh, critical case right that's when some kind of a medical treatment is uh, necessitated most of the medical treatment if you look at it is uh, providing oxygen okay you provide oxygen ensure that the guy does not die so that the guy is able to uh, uh, fight the virus okay so that's what uh, essentially takes place in sometimes i mean maybe there is a bacterial attack because the virus has killed some cell and then the cell dead cells attract the bacteria bacterial infection so you give antibacterial to uh, ensure that the bacterial infection does not spread okay so again you are giving medicine to bacteria not to the virus okay so uh, this is what happens when you are in a hospital this is what the virus does what does our body do okay if you look at uh, our immune system there are uh, three components to this immune system okay level 1 is called barriers for example skin is a barrier okay uh, most viruses and bacteria cannot enter through skin okay they cannot enter through skin very rarely fungus can cause for example skin disease okay uh, there are hardly very few uh, uh, viral or bacterial disease which can affect skin okay so skin is uh, particularly constructed in particular way because it's a barrier okay the second is what is called as a innate immune innate immune system what does it do like i said that the cells emit something called cytokines so when the cell feels that uh, it has been infected it uh, emits something called cytokine so the nearby cells are warned so the nearby cells uh, uh, for example the nearest cells kill themselves so that the uh, uh, the germ cannot spread to them and uh, skin uh, cells which are slightly far away alert and then uh, make their uh, uh, anti germ actions uh, uh, ready okay the cell which is actually uh, releasing cytokine uh, after releasing the cytokine kills itself okay so this is a innate system for example which is not specific meaning that whether the germ is a bacteria whether the germ is a virus whether that germ is a particular bacteria or other bacteria or this virus or that virus this response is same okay so this response is same but virus and bacteria are also evolving okay and evolve in the uh, uh, life history okay from that what uh, the virus and bacteria does is they have lot of camouflage meaning that uh, they will have parts which will look like our own body part so then the uh, innate system will be inadequate because innate system if it detects some parts which are like our body meaning that proteins which are like our protein then uh, the innate system will not work okay because then uh, yeah, if if then the innate system works then it mean that uh, uh, our own body cells will be treated as uh, germs so then uh, actually then you have uh, something called as immunocompromised disease okay so then uh, our cells commit suicide on its own then you die right so it it becomes a issue anyway let's not get into uh, too much detail on immunology these two are not what we are going to discuss today 
because these are all non specific the uh, key is adaptive what is called as adaptive immune system a yeah, immune system that works against a particular germ or a particular bacteria or a particular virus okay so what is this uh, adaptive what does this adaptive mean that's what i would like to explain all uh, germs will have some kind of a surface structure okay there will be some surface structure basically which is uh, the protein uh, structure part of the protein structure which will be exhibited outside that particular uh, uh, protein structure is technically called as antigen okay and in the antigen there will be a smaller structures which is called as epitope anyo let's not get into that kind of a detail that's not what uh, we want what we want to know is that the antigen has a particular structure our body produces antibody which has a complementary structure so when it comes and binds the antibody comes and binds to this antigen that means it can make the uh, uh, virus ineffective and it can do more okay so basically uh, it can make it ineffective so you can imagine the antigen is like a nut and the antibody is like a spanner okay so basically uh, uh, this is what is adaptive so where is the adaptiveness coming here uh, there are very many kinds of uh, nuts so one spanner will not be enough right so similarly there are very many kinds of uh, uh, viruses okay so there are very many kinds of viruses so we also need antibodies which are specific to that so if i need a spanner for this spanner for this will be different from spanner for this right they won't be same right so we need specific spanners all right so similarly we need specific antibodies so if you are going to look at a car mechanic okay uh, the car mechanic would have uh, seen different kinds of car ambassador car uh, fiat car um, uh, audi you no know, this that etc bmw you know whatever you know i mean they would have seen uh, lots of and then that person would have a uh, set of tools which are required for that set of cars that uh, is garage as met similarly our body because in our living right from the birth we are exposed to virus and whenever we are exposed to virus our body produces specific antibody for that particular virus so if you look at each of us you me everyone on the average each of us will have about 25 million t cells and each of us will have about 10 billion b cells when i say different i don't mean in number when you are talking about spanner for example there is spanner size 2 spanner size 16 spanner size 18 you no know, they are all different same way different uh, uh, t cells and b cells i'll explain what is t cell b cell bit later okay you can imagine them as some kind of antibodies okay uh, both of them are not called as antibodies but b cell is called as antibodies but anyhow broadly okay so a particular virus will elicit a particular antibody a another virus requires a different antibody not the same one okay they have to have different structures that's the adaptiveness so why again adaptive that's what i'm going to come to okay suppose the same mechanic uh uh in his garage a new type of car comes which he has uh, never seen until now and this new type of car has a particular kind of a nut okay none of this spanner which is in his uh, toolbox will be helpful to open this right so what does this uh, car mechanic do the car mechanic is perplexed so the car mechanic has to say okay leave the car here and uh, send his uh, boy to uh, shops to buy a spanner for this particular screw nut right maybe accidentally the uh, specific spanner is available in the next door maybe it is not available maybe the guy is searching uh, uh, 
all over the city he is not able to get it you know all these possibilities occur right that's exactly happens when a new virus infects okay when a new virus infects our body tries to check whether if any of this uh, billions of millions of uh, antibodies within us is enough to fit with it okay slowly the body find that none of them are fitting okay so then the body understands that immune system understands that it's a new kind of a virus that you need to develop a new antibody so broadly most of the antibodies are uh, y shape or other at least i'll take the y shape and explain it's the same thing that will happen in another things also it's a y shape in this the uh, head of this arm or variable region meaning that they can vary this part will remain same but this part can change that is they can evolve modify okay so suppose when uh, our body meets a particular uh, uh, virus which is new one okay our body takes roughly fitting uh, uh, antibody and slowly and steadily changes its uh, structure okay changes its structure until this is able to fit exactly the virus okay so this is the this is called as affinity maturation so this is what we call as adaptive immune basically meaning that our body evolves when we enter encounter a new virus and evolves the antibody which actually fits the virus okay so that's what is uh, happening inside our body so once you get the right kind of uh, spanner well the uh, mechanic can open up the uh, engine and uh, do all the work right so basically once you get the right spanner then uh, the uh, uh, game of the virus is over broadly okay so then we are cured we are back home so that is why we say that in viral fever i mean viral uh, diseases till now maybe tomorrow things may change as of now our body has to create the antibody specific to that virus nothing else can work as of now nothing else can work okay people are trying various antiviral uh, uh, medicines but almost none of them work maybe i'll share a link maybe you can read i have written an article about uh, antiviral drugs okay so i'll share a link you can uh, read it up later uh, let's go further so what actually happens is that the virus is trying to do something we are trying to do so our body immune system is trying to do something so there is a tug of war okay when we encounter uh, the uh, uh, corona virus okay which is a new virus okay we don't have a anti uh, body which is having a affinity to the antigen of the corona virus okay there is no affinity so in the tug of war in the initial part the uh, corona virus hand is in the is having the upper hand okay so in the tug of war slowly the corona virus infects spreads because we are not able to stop it because we don't have the uh, right kind of antibody but by then our body is able to find out a low affinity antibody a antibody which is not having the perfect uh, uh, neutralizing ability but kind of a low affinity okay <laughs> so not all viruses are able to be killed by this but some of them are able to be arrested by it so the virus progression is uh, arrested to an extent small extent by then our body is also trying to find out or rather trying to adapt uh, this uh, low affinity into a better fitting one ultimately the uh, number of virus in our body also increases by then our body has also created the i affinity uh, uh, antibody so because of that uh, we are able to uh, create the uh, necessary uh, immune response to the virus so right now our body as the upper hand i mean in terms of antibody virus action but something else could have happened in between that's when uh, the progress uh, become serious critical etc because the virus has entered into our blood stream and it's causing clot in the blood stream 
our virus has eaten away part of our lungs so there is no enough oxygen okay they are all uh, uh, something very different okay that's not what i am talking about here i am i'm talking about the balance of power between the virus and our antibody so if you look at <coughs> treatment to uh, uh, covid we are ensuring that the patient does not die before <coughs> our body is able to create the i affinity antigen and you are cured only when you are able to create at least uh, substantially i affinity antigen we don't know whether it happens in uh, all cases but uh, uh, certainly a uh, uh, substantial level of i affinity is required for us to clear a viral disease okay so let's go further i was talking about uh, t cell b cell t cell is uh, essentially uh, the immune response which uh, uh, respond to cells which are infected by <coughs> virus okay i said that sometimes the uh, cells which are infected will uh, uh, send out uh, cytokines uh, and then inform that it is being infected i also said that sometimes that uh, cytokine response might be muted because the virus itself is having some chemicals which will mute the cytokine okay but irrespective of that the infected cell will uh, display viral antigen and then a cytokine uh, uh, t cell will be able to identify that uh, viral antigen and similarly the t cell will have to evolve you know same way like a nut and bolt i mean nut and spanner the t cells have to also evolve okay so to fit with the viral antigen b cell is uh, uh, cells which will emit something called as antibodies this is what usually we hear about okay so this antibodies are in the extra cellular space that is in between cells so these are able to uh, attach to viruses which are outside the cell so basically t cell is for inside the cells virus inside the cell and b cell is for virus outside the cell in a very simple way put and we need to clear virus in both places suppose if you allow virus to be in the cell then it will keep on reproducing and in infect the nearby cell and then uh, keep on uh, uh, the infection will not go away suppose you clear only outside the cell then also accidentally few of them will be able to enter into some cell and act, then it will be able to multiply so it will be like uh, uh, keeping the tap open while you are mopping the floor okay you have to keep on mopping okay it will be a never ending uh, situation so you need to shut both that is uh, virus inside the cell and virus outside the cell okay so a good immune response will uh, uh, result in this whether it's natural or otherwise so what do we do in vaccine in vaccine what we do is that we introduce one small part of the uh, virus to our immune system okay uh, most of the vaccines today focus on uh, spike protein with regard to uh, covid we uh, focus on spike protein because that is a key uh, protein with which uh, the virus is able to enter our cell okay so once you arrest it i mean once you get a antibody for it then uh, uh, most likely that our uh, vaccines will have good efficacy that's what was the assumption that's how people started working uh, on vaccines uh, targeting the spike protein okay so what do you do uh you introduce the spike protein some or other into our body there are multiple ways you can do that i mean you introduce it in some one way or other then our body will think that is our immune system will think that it's a virus okay the immune system does not know whether the virus is uh, full whether virus is partial the moment the immune system sees antigen it will start creating antibody fitting to it okay so spike protein is uh, uh, having lot of antigen parts okay lot many part of the spike protein as antigens okay so our body will start producing antibodies for those parts once our uh, uh, body creates antibody then we are safe okay so when you introduce uh, uh, the uh, spike protein uh, mrna into our body our body produces spike protein so our body produces antibody for it so it uh, creates both b cell response and t cell response the vaccines create both the t cell response and uh, b cell response 
So what happens? First time when the virus we are encountering a new virus, there is a tug of war. Our body is not able to produce uh, antibody with the right affinity. That is, neutralizing antibody is not produced. So the uh, uh, antibody level in our uh, body is very level, low. The virus is uh, having its field day. But slowly, through the uh, affinity uh, maturation, the right kind of antibody is produced. Then our body produces copious amount of that antibody. And because the copious amount of antibody is produced, by uh, about 14 days, 15 days, the virus is cleared. You are out of the disease. Then, of course, the antibody level falls down because virus can still lurk in one place or another, right? So, the body will keep the antibody for quite a long time. And then after that, a very small amount will be there. I told you, right, we have about 10 billion antibodies in our body, right? So, this will become one more of that, right? One more or a few more of that, okay? So, it will remain in our body. When the second time the virus attacks our body, our body will be able to immediately identify the right uh, antibody because it's already there. You don't need to create it. It need not evolve. It's already there. So it's like, for example, second time that car comes to the mechanic shop, the spanner is already with the mechanic, right? So similarly, the antibodies are there with us. Our body is able to make a quick and uh, very strong response. And because our body makes a quick and strong response, the uh, virus is not able to take a foothold. Okay, so disease does not happen. Infection may happen, but disease does not happen. Same thing with vaccine. You uh, put a vaccine, our body starts producing uh, the right kind of antibody. That is, there is an antibody maturation taking place. Right kind of antibody is produced. That antibodies are uh, seen in our blood for quite some time. And after that, the amount reduces. So you are not able to detect, but it's still there. So when you are actually exposed to uh, the uh, virus, our body is able to produce the antibody immediately. So which means that you might be infected, but you won't get the disease. Okay, so this is what how vaccines work. Okay, so uh, this is a normal lung. And this is a COVID infected uh, lung. So... One thing that we should understand is that even if you recover from COVID, there is a huge uh, challenge to our health. Lungs might be affected. Blood vessels might be affected. Okay, different parts of our body might be affected. So, it's better not to get the disease. You might get the infection. You cannot avoid it because it's there around us. Even if after vaccination you will get infection, you might get infection. But you will not get the disease. That's the uh, most important part that we need to uh, understand. Uh, last uh, one or two things I'll say and then maybe we'll uh, go in for uh, question and answers. Okay. Uh, the efficacies of uh, most of the vaccine today, I mean, there are minor variations, but broadly they are all about 80% efficacy. Okay. Let's take it as 80% efficacy, which means that if you uh, vaccinate five people, four will be protected and for one, there will be no protection. Okay. Who is that one? It's random. We don't know. We cannot find out. Okay? We cannot find out. Right? So, uh, when you hear that uh, that person was vaccinated, still he got disease or she got disease, essentially because vaccines have only 80% efficacy. You can't have 100% efficacy uh, vaccination. You can get only 100% efficacy if there is a mass vaccination. I mean, what's called as herd immunity. Okay? That's a different story. Uh, so, this is what happens in a, a vaccine. Uh, now, looking at uh, the uh, uh, vaccines, two vaccines that we are using in India, a uh, study clearly shows that, uh, uh, which was conducted in, uh, I mean, which was completed in April 20th, data up to April 20th, out of the people who got co-vaccine, two doses, okay, out of the two doses, there is a 0.04%. Uh, infection after you are vaccinated. I mean, when you get infection after vaccination, it's called breakthrough infection, meaning that it is breaking the vaccine and then uh, infecting you. The virus is able to break through the vaccine barrier and infect you. So it's called as a breakthrough uh, infection. So the breakthrough infection is 0.04%. Uh, COVID shield is also something very similar, 0.03. 
don't look at that zero one percent as uh, anything substantial. That's basically because of the numbers. Here it's a very small number. It's a very big number. Okay. When this number also becomes bigger, uh, you will find that the uh, results are not going to be very substantially different. Uh, the difference will be very uh, minor. So this doesn't prove that one of them is better than other or anything of that sort. Okay. I think uh, I'll uh, stop here. Uh, uh, and uh, lastly, this is the one thing. Uh, the reason that uh, why people science movement say that vaccination for some is vaccination for none. Okay, that's an important uh, statement that uh, PSMs are people science movement are making. Basically, because all vaccines have only about eighty percent efficacy, which means uh, twenty people out of hundred, even after vaccination, will not be protected. They can be protected if you vaccinate huge numbers. Okay. Suppose you get vaccine and still unprotected. We cannot know it, but assume. For example, I am uh, vaccinated, but I am unprotected. Okay, randomly. I don't know it. Huh? But how will the virus come to me? It will come to me through, for example, people who I am in contact with. Let's say, for example, my wife. Okay. So, my wife is also vaccinated, but randomly, if I am unprotected, it's not going to happen. I assume that she is also going to be unprotected, right? Very, very rare. So she'll be protected. So I won't get the virus through her. Okay. What about my office colleagues? Chances that uh, they are also unprotected is going to be very low. Right. So which means that almost all the people that I'm going to encounter in my life, almost all, not all, okay, are going to be people who are not be able to transmit the virus to me. So even if I am unprotected, I am protected because you all have taken vaccines. Okay. So I get an indirect benefit. So that is why in this kind of pandemic situation, in some of these diseases which are uh, uh, transmitted from human to human, okay, uh, mass vaccination is recommended. Right? So and we need a huge vaccination, vaccination for about 80%. Uh, uh, That's why the uh, People Science Movement is talking about uh, 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 this uh, um, slogan that the vaccination for some is vaccination for none. Because only if you vaccinate few people, even among them about 20% are going to remain unprotected. Okay. So that's a, that's not going to help. Okay. So uh, that's why we also need a, a, a massive vaccination as quick and as fast as uh, possible. Uh, I think uh, with this, uh, I'll uh, stop my initial presentation. Maybe I slightly took longer time than uh, we thought Maybe we can go into questions. Yeah. Yeah, doctor. Uh, I have few uh, questions which came up in the union uh, yeah, discussion. Yeah. So I'll uh, uh, put forward. Yeah. So first one, uh, this uh, commonly or recently now being discussed is the lab virus. So it is not an evolved one. So it is a, a, a laboratory virus. And uh, this would be uh, a, a kind of a weapon being used against the people conspiracy theories uh, around that. So similarly, one another conspiracy theory is this pharma companies are using Indians as a lab rat to test their untested uh, vaccine uh, because of uh, uh, irrespective of uh, considering the death rate, they are uh, putting the vaccine here, testing on us and then taking it to Western countries. So uh, can we uh, start with that? Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, do that. Just give me a second. Huh? Just a minute. Just a minute. Eh? Uh, I'll take the first one first. Okay. And then uh, go into the next one. Uh, let me uh, share a screen. Okay. Uh, I think you are seeing my uh, screen, right? So, for example, if you look at uh, who are vaccinated heavily, hugely, you find vaccines are being used in a developed world much, much, much more than in the third world. In India, 
we have not even reached 4% to 5% of our population. But whereas uh, Israel or uh, uh, UAE or uh, US or UK, uh, you know, countries like this and of course few countries where uh, the China has given their vaccine uh, in huge numbers, okay. You find uh, the uh, vaccination rate is very high. So if we are used as lab rats, then why the numbers in uh, US is high? US should be 1% and we should be 40%, right? If we are going to be used as lab rats. Yeah, so it doesn't make sense, okay? Uh, in fact, what's actually happening is because of the neoliberal uh, situation uh, today, the vaccine companies are uh, creating a condition of shortage. They want a situation of shortage so that they can uh, uh, make uh, super profits. Okay, so that's what is essentially happening. We have the technology. We also have companies which can actually produce vaccine. So which means that whole world can be vaccinated. If you all decide, for example, within uh, next, uh, I mean, we need to make some changes, so which will take about four months. That is, we have to re-work re, uh, this uh, uh, vaccine manufacturing units to produce this vaccine, which will take about four months. Okay. So, uh, after that, if you start producing in another about uh, uh, 10 to 12 months, you can actually vaccine, give vaccine to all over the world. Okay. We have that wherewithal. We have the production capacity. Okay. With uh, We need that uh, four-month gap. But why nobody is doing it? When we know that it is needed, why it is not being done? It is not being done because if you do it and if you allow this to be produced by multiple players, then the uh, few companies cannot make super profit. Okay, so it's basically uh, what I see around is few companies want to create and sustain the yeah, artificial uh, shortage situation, vaccine shortage situation, so that they can make super profit. Okay, so that's why you find that uh, many of the companies are uh, not even. Uh, uh, improving their uh, production only when for example a lot of uh, uh, pressures occurred that uh, the companies in India also started looking for increasing the production. Do you mean to say that these people were fools that they didn't know that they need to increase production? Okay. Why now? Why not four months before? Okay. So you can very clearly see that uh, 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 neoliberal politics of uh, market, you know, using the market and market shortage to make super profit here. So the uh, conspiracy theories, like uh, for example, vaccine is uh, being uh, used in third world as rab rat, does not stand the scrutiny. Same way, for example, the claim that it's a laboratory made. As of today, if you look at all the evidences that we have today, solid evidences, okay, not circumstantial evidences. Circumstantial evidences, you can imagine anything, okay. Uh, 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 that's good for doing research. That's for uh, good for asking question, but not for good for making inferences. Okay, so uh, I mean, in uh, some of my uh, um, philosophy of science lectures, I uh, usually give a small uh, uh, example. Okay, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, we are all from uh, various parts of the country, so I don't know whether you all have seen this movie. There's a Tamil movie called Panchatantram. Okay, in that uh, the Kamal. Uh, Kamala Hassan would be uh, uh, in a room with a girl, uh, not his uh, wife, okay? But the girl is actually uh, like uh, his sister, I mean, or rather at least that's a kind of relation between them, okay? Uh, and uh, by that time, his wife will enter there and then the wife will mistake, okay? Mistakenly believe that they both are having an affair. Circumstantial evidences are like that. It can be true, it need not be true. Okay, so you cannot make inferences, scientific inferences out of circumstantial evidences. So if you throw away circumstantial evidences and look for only hard evidence, what we know today, all the hard evidence put together is it's a naturally evolved one. So this whole talk of uh, conspiracy theory is also one of the important hallmark of this uh, post-truth world that you want to see everything as some kind of a conspiracy. Okay, so uh, it's one of the important hallmark of uh, post-truth world. I mean, on this we can talk quite a lot, but maybe not today because that needs a very long uh, uh, discussion. Something to do with, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, fear and difference between fear and... Uh,
you have a real enemy okay you fear for example uh, that uh, if i jump into water whether i will uh, be able to swim or not so there is a concrete thing before you anxiety is uh, directionless you no know? the conspiracy theories create anxieties which are directionless okay suppose you know that uh, it was made in china what will you do are you going to uh, shoot every chinese that you see no okay so it's directionless uh, but scientifically speaking as of now all the evidence that you have do not amount to uh, uh, saying that it's a human made what we know is largely it's a evolved uh, i mean more evidences will come we will have more clarity but that's what is today's uh, situation okay oh, and uh, few more on the vaccination uh, sorry yeah uh, just a minute brother sir i can't hear you uh, sukumar right no no uh, well can hear you comrade so i'll uh-huh, yeah, two yeah, more yeah. questions i have i'll yeah, uh, yeah. ask so uh, th- there is a uh, understanding among it employees that so we mm. don't need to vaccinate now because it is in the early phase and uh, we'll let's wait till one year or few years till the uh, vaccination uh, process get matured and then i'll uh, vaccinate the other related uh, perspective is uh, i don't believe in covaxin and covid shield i let let me wait till the western uh, medicine comes here then i'll vaccinate so what is your perspective on that okay uh, about uh, uh, okay ttv yeah ttv i'm sukumar here in continuation okay. to what wilkin said uh. the the point is that at the beginning you said that the 80% normally for virus we don't require treatment hmm. so why why i go for vaccination because i i am not affected then what is the need for going for this vaccination this question also comes and uh, another area is that now that uh, the herbal medicine and other things are there mm. uh, well, what is the need for this vaccination why there is a hue and cry on mm. these grounds this also in continuation to that you answer okay uh, maybe i'll start with that uh, 80% uh, you don't need any intervention okay fine yeah 80% percent of the people who will get infected most likely will not read any uh, um, intervention the body will produce antibodies and then uh, you will get cured okay but because you are covid disease i made a distinction between infection and disease okay so when you are vaccinated at the best you might get infected but not the disease okay so what does it mean by infected that if you do a test pcr test maybe you will find a virus in your uh, nose and uh, uh, throat fob okay it would not be able to spread to large number of uh, cells it will not be able to uh, uh, kill many number of uh, cells and so on and so forth okay so which means that your organs are not affected you get a disease even if you get cured you come back home uh there are lots of uh, uh, effect i'll show you uh, one uh, um, slide what we know today okay we may know more tomorrow but what we know today uh, let me show you okay uh, so if you get uh, the covid disease okay about 58% of people who get cured and come back home have fatigue okay and about 44% have a headache and about 16% have memory loss okay and about 12% have digestive disorder i'm just picking up something okay i'm just picking up something randomly okay this is what we know okay about 19% will have cough cough will not kill you so don't worry not a big deal okay but memory loss is something serious how do you know that uh, maybe you are 20 25 i mean you got a disease and uh, this memory loss is slowly progressing and by 40 uh, you are in alzheimer are you happy with it i don't know yeah so this is what we know so the disease is also not like a common cold where uh, once you are cured of that common cold nothing much happens in your future life or largely nothing much happens in the future life because covid enters your uh, uh, respiratory tract and from there seeps into your uh, blood stream 
and it moves to various uh, uh, organs okay it's a serious thing to uh, keep in mind even when you are getting cured and come back home it's a serious thing to keep in mind so don't make that mistake number one uh, herbal i eat uh, turmeric i eat uh, ginger it's not going to change for example my antibody okay the uh, car mechanic has to go to a hardware store and buy this panel for this particular uh, new nut which is there however the car mechanic is going to do a prayer hug all his employees okay eat uh, three times or keep fast as long as you are not going to get that spanner you are not going to open that car so as long as your body is not able to produce the uh, uh, right uh, neutralizing antibody you are not going to have protection so all our uh, so called uh, herbal eating and this and that is not going to make this adaptive immune adaptive immune it's uh, your eating is uh, immaterial except in the sense that you need to have a balanced food so that you are healthy if you are unhealthy means that uh, the amount of total energy that your body has is very less and uh, whenever you have a less uh, uh, energy a huge amount of that energy will be given to for example the brain function or the heart function or uh, for your breathing okay so it's something very uh, something like this suppose if you are a very poor person if you look at india if you are a poor person out of your salary about uh, 30% will go for your rent and another 30% will go for your food so 60% remaining 40% is what is available for your rest of your action health education uh, uh, entertainment and so on and so forth okay uh, but suppose if you are slightly rich in your salary maybe about uh, 20% will go for rent okay maybe another 20 uh, 20 i mean 10% will go for food because food except for let's say luxury eating uh, if you have 1% you are not going to eat uh, because you are rich uh, 10 kg right yeah so uh, the uh, food consumption will have a plateau so then you will have a lot of money for other things okay so in the same way our body also if you have lesser than a particular threshold then all your systems will be in problem immune system will be in your problem your memory will be in problem no i am not talking about that uh, uh, below the threshold level once you are eating properly once you are having a nourishing food that's it that's enough so to that extent food is important okay only to that extent for that whether you should eat uh, uh, ginger whether you should eat uh, beef whatever that you prefer you eat but the balanced food that's all okay beyond that it's not food that is going to change your adaptive uh, immune system so this uh, food myth is uh, something very wrong okay so don't fall into that uh, now uh, what is best there is a general saying that uh, the best may not come in the way of good okay so how do you know that uh, the uh, foreign uh, thing is what is best because now things are emerging new variants are coming for example now we know that uh, covaxin is having uh, a uh, better uh, immune response to some of this new variant than for example uh, uh, covid shield okay earlier our idea was something different today we know this so how do you know this in the emerging situation so this uh, thing of that i'll wait for the best to come uh, then you may have to wait for a very long time okay by the time i mean you are actually only taking risk if you are wanting to taking risk it's your life but if you are asking my advice i'll say that please don't take that kind of a stupid risk take good risk if you are going to help people okay fight uh, uh, struggle okay that's a risk also but do that risk because it's are going to be beneficial to you and to others but this risk is basically like uh, merely some kind of a uh, ego trip uh, i am not uh, for it okay so that's other thing uh, next is the first question uh, yeah wait uh, while i have answered okay yeah should uh, we wait uh that's the current uh, uh, situation with regard to these uh, things i suppose i answered the things that you have get yeah go but a few uh, the two sets of questions i have okay there is uh, one few questions in the chat box should i take it i uh, i'll uh, group them under last comment 
Ah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Please, so, please carry on. Ah. Few, uh, so one question is, so what the impact on uh, animals it will have? So recent news have come that it started affecting animals. So what will be that impact? And what will be the uh, post-COVID diseases? Okay, one is uh, that uh, earlier we were not very clear that, for example, if we are infected, whether we will infect, uh, let's say, pet animals and so on. Now, we know that uh, there is uh, some uh, reported cases of uh, pet animals getting uh, infected, but still we don't know whether the pet animals can transmit. Okay, uh, remember, uh, there are, there are uh, uh, things which we need to uh, uh, understand as separate stuff when we are talking about virology. Uh, infection is one thing, getting disease is another thing. Even when you are infected, whether you are, uh, your transmittability is another thing, okay? These things are not uh, uh, synonymous, right? So, we do know that, for example, uh, even in a zoo, uh, uh, there are studies which say that uh, uh, some of the zoo animals have been uh, uh, found to be infected by uh, caretakers, okay? But whether virus will uh, be shed from those animals and then uh, that animal virus will infect others. That is whether the animals will be able to uh, produce, uh, 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 let's say, viable virus for spreading. We don't know about it. But yes, certainly uh, pet animals uh, are uh, possible to be get infected. So that's why early on, uh, uh, people also advise that if you are uh, getting infected with the virus, I mean, if you are detected, Keep away from your pet animal. Okay, so that's a uh, yeah. And the uh, next one is on the uh, post-COVID diseases. What, uh, what post-COVID diseases? Uh, I showed you a picture. I'll show it once again. That uh, actually, uh, can you see the image? Yes, comrade. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are all the post-COVID uh, disorders that uh, we have listed long-term effects of uh, COVID that uh, we have uh, uh, detected as of now. As of now, meaning it's, uh, itself is about a few months old. Okay, Things are emerging, new information are coming. Something like, say, for example, 3% stroke, we know. Okay, uh, About 0.3% there is paranoia, which is developed out of uh, post-COVID. Okay, uh, Basically, brain, uh, 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 brain stuff. Roughly about 44% have headache. There is about 27% attention disorder if you're talking about a brain. If you're talking about a, a, a heart, about 10% has a reduced pulmonary capacity. Okay? Pulmonary fibrosis is possible in about 5%. Okay? Renal failure is possible in 1%. So these are all various uh, post COVID uh, uh, troubles which uh, can occur. That's why uh, the people science movement has been arguing that it's not enough to set up uh, COVID care centers. At some time, we should also start seriously thinking about the post-COVID uh, treatment uh, that will be required for people who have recovered from COVID. Okay? That will also be a very important uh, uh, thing to look at. Okay, so, on the third wave, so related to third wave, some, uh, I have some set of questions. So one, so even after two doses, we we are uh, finding that the uh, COVID infection happens. So will the uh, variant or new variants will emerge even after vaccination? That's one. Second, on the uh, I am a recent I am a uh, uh, proposal by Gita. Uh, so what uh, uh, in in the document proposal she gave it is mentioned that India can vaccinate only thirty percentage of the population by end of twenty twenty one. So yeah. uh, there, there seems to be no uh, possibility of 100% vaccination even after two years by uh, the statistics given in that. So in that case, what would be the uh, situation, possibility of third wave and the uh, death rate or the variants, upcoming variants? Uh, and uh, this, uh, there is a uh, program by WHO called COVAX. So uh, they plan, they uh, seems to suggest that uh, instead of opening up the patents related to the vaccine, they suggest uh, we will donate the vaccines to 20% of the population. What do you think? Uh, uh, what is your perspective on that? These are the questions. Okay. Let's uh, start with the third wave. Okay. 
so this is the uh, india okay you can see the first wave the second wave coming down this is the worldwide if you look at the worldwide uh, i mean uh, uh, according to international uh, experts epidemiologists we are in the fourth wave one two three and the fourth wave okay so world over fourth wave if you are looking us us has uh, come down from the third wave and because of the huge vaccination it's almost uh, the uh, pandemic situation is uh, vanishing in us okay brazil there have been multiple waves and waves within waves you can see here uh, uk again three waves and the third wave is really bad i mean all the places you will see that the third wave is really very bad and of course now they are also coming out of the pandemic situation because of uh, massive vaccination germany again uh, uh, three waves you can see that and then uh, uh, again because of the vaccination of course we are, we are not seeing substantial reduction because germany has not gone into that kind of substantial vaccination like us and uh, uh, uk or israel israel you can see that uh, there is again uh, three waves and then uh, now almost totally uh, the pandemic situation is gone post vaccination this is china china uh, because of their uh, what we can call as a, a stringent test trace treat policy so which mean that they had a very massive test meaning that if you are walking in road the you might be tested not because you will randomly people will be picked up and then they'll be tested okay once you are tested and then uh, the test is multiple kind i mean uh, pcr test your temperature your uh, uh, blood serum level you know all those kind of stuff i mean blood serum antigen and so on okay in any of those things if you are suspected to be a carrier okay you will be compulsorily required to be in a covid care center where, which government established in huge numbers in huge places for large number of people to be there and then of course uh, there were all uh, places with some decent facilities so people did not mind going to that uh, care center of course people will have uh, hesitancy fear uh, repulsion you know all those things will be there but still it, it was livable okay so broadly they were able to uh, 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 make people follow this uh, process so basically they broke the chain completely for the virus to uh, transmit from people to people and hence they were able to reduce the uh, uh, viral transmission to a great extent to that extent that almost there is no pandemic in china today but if china opens up meaning that uh, uh, china unwinds and says that anybody can come to china travel anywhere without any restriction then china will see a explosion but china is also one of the forerunner in uh, vaccination china will be able to vaccinate almost all its population by end of this year so which mean that uh, from next year largely they will be out of this uh, pandemic uh, situation unless there is something very unknown takes place okay unknown unknown is uh, unknown we cannot say anything about it so with that uh, that's that's what the chinese policy is same thing is with the new zealand new zealand also followed somewhat very similar to the chinese policy there are also few other countries which did that okay so they are in that uh, situation so if you are looking from this uh, uh, historical aspect uh, we do not wish third wave to happen in india but uh, i think uh, uh, it will be a pipe dream to think that there will be no third wave okay so that's what situation is end of this year how much will get uh, vaccinated that's a question that uh, came in if you want to vaccinate uh, uh, all by uh, uh, one second Uh, if you want to vaccinate all uh, by uh, end of uh, this year you need to vaccinate about uh, 76 lakhs per day okay so you have to uh, uh, about uh, you, you require about uh, 70 lakhs per day okay if you do it in that uh, fashion if you vaccinate uh, 70 lakhs per day then you will be able to vaccinate by end of this year but currently we are doing 16 lakhs per day okay so which mean that we need a huge supply where is that vaccine is going to come that's a chief uh, uh, trouble before me before us as i was pointing out that uh, uh, 
most vaccine producing companies are wanting to create a, a situation of uh, scarcity so that uh, they can uh, see big profit okay so that's a challenge so unless and otherwise we increase the uh, production capacity that is more companies are uh, uh, induced to produce okay so this is not going to work about the covax covax came in uh, when uh, the initial period of uh, covid there was a kind of a international uh, 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 let's say cooperation okay in science there was a huge cooperation in the beginning right people were sharing information which otherwise would have been kept uh, uh, as trade secrets like say for example the china released the full genome sequence the very next day okay otherwise people would have kept it as a, a secret uh, uh, information because full genome is required for creating all the mrna and other kinds of uh, virus i mean uh, vaccines okay so it is in that context the covax was thought of and said that uh, it's a global problem so we need a global solution so who led uh, uh, actions will take place they estimated and they said that uh, by the end of uh, december 2021 we will be able to produce vaccines which will cover about 20% of the world population and little more so what we will do is that we will promise every country 20% vaccination by end of december okay so which means that all companies which are producing a vaccine were supposed to supply to the central pool and then it will be allocated to different places but they didn't take off because uh, companies were more interested in uh, profit than uh, public health quite obviously okay so covax is kind of a non starter at this point of time right it is not uh, be able to meet its uh, uh, objectives at this point of time yeah variant uh, as of now uh although the efficacy of vaccines are slightly less one is less one is more you know there is variation within vaccines itself as of now none of the variants are completely uh, vaccine escape okay none of them are completely vaccine escape and none of these vac variants have become the uh, uh, most dominant uh, variant all over the world okay it may be in pockets but not all over the world so as of now the variants are not a huge threat to a vaccine as of now if the variants uh, emerge uh, in a particular direction in future they may become uh, completely uh, vaccine uh, escape then we will have a trouble of course that time also it doesn't mean that the vaccinated will have zero protection the efficacy will come down from 80% it may come down to 70% you know that kind of stuff right so basically because see uh, virus does not have only one antigen or rather even spike protein does not have only one antigen there are multiple antigens okay so the changes occurs not in all places it occurs only in few places so uh, but sometimes you know random things can happen right so that kind of random things can completely change the scenario but as of now things have not changed in that fashion a final question so uh, the vaccines earlier has to take many years for the clinical trial to end but now it is taking a short period why is it so yeah so number one is uh, about 100 years ago if people have to travel from madurai to chennai uh, or rather we know for example a travel log okay written about 100 years ago uh, and that guy is traveling from uh, tanjavur to chennai and uh, it is taking him two days to travel from tanjavur to chennai today somebody can travel from tanjavur to chennai by road and the same day return back to tanjavur how that happens technology technology has changed technology has progress so what used to take 100 years yesterday need not take 100 years today that's number one there are multiple so that is number one number 2 uh, as i was pointing out then when the pandemic started uh, there was a kind of a spirit of cooperation okay of course there were people who were uh, still thinking of various stuff i'm not saying that everybody became but the uh, trend international trend for cooperation was having more stronger uh, uh, takers than otherwise okay 
particularly in the field of research and that kind of areas. So what happened is that a uh, lot of research information was uh, shared uh, openly, publicly. In fact, many uh, science publications also opened up their uh, uh, journals say that during the COVID pandemic period, all the journals and articles will be available for uh, access, which were otherwise behind paywalls and so on and so forth. Okay, so COVID period, uh, many uh, uh, publications also opened up. I'll uh, give an example of one thing so that we will understand why this opening up was a cha big change. Okay. Let's look at, for example, the development of Covaxin in India. So if you want to develop Covaxin, what you have to do is first, you have to grow this virus in some place. Okay. Then harvest that virus and apply a particular chemical which will uh, make the virus inactive, meaning that uh, make uh, its uh, uh, RNA degrade, but uh, keep the rest of the body as it is. Okay. So that's called as inactivated virus. Now I'm saying you a very simple stuff. So for this, what do we need? We need something on which you have to grow virus. Where does otherwise virus grow? Virus grow in your in, in your uh, lungs. I cannot uh, make people infected, harvest their lung and take out the virus, right? That's not possible. So what do I do? Big challenge. But uh, all over the world, 100 people worked in 100 different directions. And one of them, I mean, basically, it's like uh, fly 100 flights, one of them will fly, right? So in the same way, right? I mean, you throw 100 stones, one of them will hit a mango, right? So in the same way, one of them hit the right stuff. They found a particular uh, uh, monkey, their uh, uh, lungs, lung cells, epithelial cells are uh, conducive for this virus to grow. Okay, and they made that information public which otherwise would have been secret. Now it was public. Because it was public, the same idea was taken up by, uh, for example, the Chinese, same idea was taken up by, for example, India. And uh, we started growing uh, virus in that cell line. Okay. So now you have a medium on which you can grow the cell. Now, second, I want uh, uh, to uh, deactivate that uh, virus. So people were again trying various things. So whatever chemical that you are using to deactivate should not cause allergy to human being when you are putting into human being, right? So there are multiple things to take care of. So again, uh, uh, people found out a particular combination will be more effective in uh, deactivating and also be safe for human. That again was publicly available, so we were able to use it. And of course, we had to tinker a bit before we use it in uh, our uh, laboratory, okay? So you have coaxin. If you have to otherwise develop this coaxin in a condition of where people are keeping knowledge secret, not sharing it publicly, it would have taken years because your company will have to negotiate with somebody who has the technology. First, you have to believe that technology. So accidentally, a combination will come where uh, uh, right kind of things have come together, right? But today, because everything was public in the initial period, the uh, speed of research could be uh, much faster. Okay. So that's uh, uh, one important factor that uh, happened in this particular pandemic, which enabled the uh, vaccines to come up fast. Third is, I mean, uh, to an extent, you should also look at this claim that, oh, we have developed this vaccine so fast with a pinch of salt. Because all these vaccines, have their origin in the SARS-1 pandemic. Okay, almost all these vaccines have their uh, starting point in SARS-1 pandemic. Okay, SARS-1 is something like SARS-2, same coronavirus. So that time people had started working on developing vaccines. For example, the Oxford group, their vaccine is actually nothing but tweaking the SARS-1 uh, vaccine for SARS-2 vaccine. Then you will say that why there is no SARS-1 vaccine? Because the uh, industry said that uh, there is no profit in making that vaccine. So they did not make that vaccine. They did not bring it to the uh, clinical trial. But up to clinical trial, that uh, technology was already available. So you took that technology, uh, dusted it out, changed a bit, and then you created a vaccine for uh, SARS-2. That's it. Okay. 
so if you look at uh, the uh, speed speed is combination of multiple factor technology has developed so we can do it faster uh, uh, there was international collaboration the technology was already developing which uh, 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 i mean we were riding on it you know this kind of multiple factors came in and that's how uh, these vaccines have come up this fast thank you so much so uh, if there and okay is, uh, so the clinical trial i mean this is a very false statement okay there was a time when uh, for example sputnik was uh, announced uh, for emergency use before the completion of third trial but that was that time after that the third trial is completed and the third trial actually showed that uh, sputnik is about 92% efficacy okay so this uh, this point of uh, not completing the trial was a, a charge which was sustainable at a different point in time not today today all the vaccines about there are nine vaccines which are in use all over the world all of them have passed the uh, third stage okay some of them have not uh, some of them have passed the interim third stage not the complete third stage uh, interim third stage uh, that's all okay now let me answer you what is this interim third stage and complete third stage what has happened in the third stage uh, because i am also a volunteer in a, a vaccine trial okay so i am a volunteer i cannot tell you which vaccine it is uh, but i am a volunteer in a vaccine trial so what happens is that a group of people let's say about 20000 30000 people or volunteers are divided into two groups one is given vaccine the other is given a injection which is not a vaccine okay so nobody will know who got what okay and then you are there about 1% of this group you expect them to contract infection you wait till that time okay so uh, let's say about uh, uh, some thousand people are infected with uh, covid out of this group then you look at who are these thousand people how many of them have been given actual vaccine how many of them have been given uh, placebo okay from that you find the efficacy so in this you have uh, different stages at the interim stage you look for a particular percentage in the final stage you look for another percentage sometimes uh, when there is a lockdown for example the chinese trials never chinese vaccines were not tried in china at all the third stage first two stage you can do second third stage you cannot do in china at all because there is no pandemic in china so chinese vaccines third trial took place in other countries like i said no so out of this uh, you are vaccinated i mean uh, the trial participant a particular percentage should get uh, covid till that time you have to wait so uh, when you are talking about uh, uh, some of these emergency use vaccine there are interim stage and final stage so interim stage all of them have reached final stage you are not reaching because most of the world we are controlling this pandemic right yeah so we are controlling this pandemic we are not living it uncontrolled so to reach the third stage end point will uh, take time right but all of them have gone through the interim point of uh, third stage the claim that uh, trials were not completed was true in a particular point of time not now okay thank you comrade so uh, i think we'll uh, conclude now uh, uh, the questions people sent are over so i don't have any questions with me so uh, uh, there is one question will i encounter yeah. covid after uh, two doses okay there is one question here okay uh, see when you get vaccinated the virus does not know that you are a vaccinated or unvaccinated person the virus will try to uh, latch on to you okay so when it is trying to latch on to you say for example somebody your uh, uh, your office colleague is uh, infected maybe uh, non symptomatic so that person has transmitted the virus will try to enter your uh, uh, respiratory tract and if you are tested you might test positive what will happen is that most likely that is 99.9% you will not fall sick okay even there as i said 0.1% there is a possibility of you falling sick 
because none of them can give you 100 percent protection all of them will have only a certain level of efficacy 80 percent efficacy in terms of uh, not infected so 20 percent will get infected out of the 20 percent how many will get disease there will be a small percentage who will get disease okay Okay, Robert. Uh, Gopi, do, do you want to add anything? Uh, no, no, no. You conclude. Conclude. Okay. Okay, Gopi. So, uh, on behalf of the National Coordination Committee, uh, I thank uh, TVV for taking uh, so much time and uh, explaining us patiently on the questions raised by us. So, uh, 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 let us, uh, as planned, on the 10th, let us take for the, forward the campaign for max vaccination and demanding government to uh, improve the vaccine production as early as possible to enable uh, the 100% vaccination of the uh, people of country for free and uh, universal vaccination. So on uh, behalf of everyone, I once again thank Comrade and uh, uh, we'll conclude the meeting. Thank, thank you. you. See you. Huh? Okay.